Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will be making a high low peplum ball gown for a little girl. Hi, my name is Ayo and I'm reaching you from Lagos, Nigeria. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. I'll be working with the following items. Taylor's chalk, tape measure, one and a half yard of bridal satin, two and a half yards of African print fabric, also known as Ankara, a yard of lining fabric, five yards of two net, the, ba the basic bodice pattern which I drafted in a previous tutorial. A pair of scissors. So now I have already gone ahead to cut the basic bodice patterns on the Ankara fabric and also on the lining fabric for both the back and the front. The link for the basic bodice pattern will be in the description box below. I have also added half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seams where I use one inch seam allowance. I also fixed interfacing to the neckline of the lining pieces for both the back and the front. So what I intend to do now is to join the lining and the Ankara fabric together at the neckline for both the back and the front pieces. I will place the lining pins on the main fabric like this, right sides will be together and I will paint the two pieces together like this. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the back pieces as well. So now that has been done, I have joined the lining and the main fabric together at the necklines. I notch the seam allowances as you can see, after which I underseek it to the lining. I underseek to the lining. I did the same thing for all the other pieces as well and I seek the seam allowances to the lining. I will now place the back pieces on the front piece like this. Right sides will be together. Then I will join the back and the front pieces together at the shoulder line using half an inch seam allowance. But first, I will pin the two pieces together like this before taking it into my sewing machine and stitching it in place. So now the back and the front have been joined together at the shoulder lines. Since the outfit is a sleeveless outfit, I will join the elbows together using half an inch sewing allowance. But first I will pin the two pieces in place like this before taking it to my sewing machine and stitching it in place. So now I've closed the armhole on both sides of the outfit as you can see. I 
After sewing, I notch the seam allowances and I understitch the seam allowances to the lining as far as I was able to go. I did the same thing for this other side as well. So now I've cut two bed pieces. The length of the belt is 28 inches. I will mark the wrong side of the out of the fabric like this using my tailor's chalk. The width of the upper part is about four and a half inches wide. Why the width of this lower part is around seven inches wide? I will now go ahead to cut out a full circle flare on this bridal satin. The waist circumference I'm working with is 21 inches. The total zip allowance on both sides of the center back is 2 inches. So the addition of the two is 23 inches. To calculate the radius for this, I'll simply divide 23 inches by 6.28 since we are cutting a full circle flake. And this gave me approximately 3.7 inches. As for the length of the flare, I will bring in the upper bodies of the outfit. The length of the upper bodies is 9 inches. The desired dress length is 26 inches. So the difference between the two is 17 inches. That is 17 minus 9 inches is 17 inches. I will add 1 inch for the same allowance, making it a total of 18 inches. So the flare length is 18 inches while the radius is 3.7 inches. So I will bring in the bridal satin. I will fold it into two like this. Then I will fold it again into two, like this, making it a total of four layers of fabric. I will now mark out the radius. I will measure out the radius, which is 3.7 inches. I will measure out the radius like this.
Then I will measure and mark the 18 inches flare length. Like this. Then I will cut it out. I will cut open one side of the of the full circle flare like this. I cut open just one side. I now want to cut the eye low peplum on the dress. The length of the front waistline is 13.5 inches. So to get the radius for a full circle flare for the front peplum, I will simply divide 13.5 by 6.28 and this gave me approximately 2.2 inches. The length that I want for the front peplum is 5 inches. So this is the fabric that I'll be using to cut the peplum. I'll be using the Ankara fabric to cut the peplum and also to cut the lining. So I have two pieces of fabric here. I will fold it into two like this. Then I will fold again into two, making a total of four layers of fabric. Remember that we are cutting the main fabric and the lining together. So the rad radius we are working with is 2.2 inches. So I will measure and mark 2.2 inches on the fabric like this. I will also measure the flare length, which is 5 inches plus 1 inch seam allowance. I will now cut it out. For the back peplum, I will measure the back waistline like this. This gave me a total of 15.5 inches for the back waistline. To get the radius for the back, I will simply divide 15.5 by 6.2 hits. Remember that we are causing a full circle flare. And this gave me approximately 2.5 inches. The length that I'll be using, my desired length for the back peplum is 10 inches. You can make yours longer or shorter than this. I will also be using the Ankara fabric to line the peplum. So I have here two pieces of Ankara fabric. I will fold it into two like this. Then I will fold into two again. Give me a total of eight layers of fabric. Remember that we are cutting the main fabric and the lining together as one. So 
So I will now go ahead and measure the radius of 2.5 inches like this. And a flare length of 10 inches plus 1 inch seam allowance. I will now go ahead and cut out the peplum. So these are the two peplums for the back and for the front. Both the lining and the main fabrics were cut together. For the front peplum, I will cut open just one side like this. This is the back peplum. I will cut open both sides of the peplum for the back. What I will do now is to, play, is to place the front peplum on top of the back peplum like this. I make sure that the front and the back are well aligned, especially at the waistline. So this side will be the side seam. So the front and the back peplum have to be equal on this side. So I will make both of them equal by using my free hand to draw a curve like this using my tailor's chalk. And I will now trim off this side. I will trim it off like this. This is the center back and this is the side. I will now place the front peplum on it like this, matching, matching the side seams, which are now equal. So this is what the eye low peplum will look like on the dress. This is the lining fabric. The waistline we are working with is 21 inches. The zip allowance is 2 inches. So the total is 23 inches. To get the radius, I will divide 23 inches by 3.14 because I will be cutting a half circle flare this time around and not a full circle. And this gave me 7.3 inches for the radius. I will be using 16 inches for the, for the length of the flare. So what I will do now is to fold the lining fabric into two. I 
I fold the lining fabric into two like this. Then I will fold it again like this to form a triangle. So from the tip of the triangle, from the tip of the triangle, I will measure the radius of 7.3 inches. And I will measure the flare length of 16 inches plus 1 inch same allowance. I will now cut it out. This is the full circle flare which I cut out on the bridal satin. I have already marked the positions of the two nets which I will gather and layer on the bridal satin. In all, we have a total of five layers of gathered two nets on the bridal satin. We have five layers. I start layering from the middle of the bridal satin. What I do is the length of each layer of the two nets. I make the two nets one inch longer than the, than the bridal satin. So the first layer is 10 inches. The distance between each layer will be two inches. So the second layer will be 12 inches. The third layer will be 14 inches long. The fourth layer will be 16 inches long. While the fifth and the final layer will be 18 inches long. So the first layer, this first layer, will be 10 inches. This second layer, will be 12 inches long. This third layer will be 14 inches long. The fourth layer will be 16 inches long. While the fifth and the final layer will be 18 inches long. I will now open up the flare. So this is what the full flare look, looks like. And I've already marked the position of the two nets on the flare. I will start layering from the middle of the, of the flare. I won't start from the lower part, but I'll start from the middle, so as not to make it too bulky. I, so I'll be layering the tool on the guidelines which I've already drawn on the bridal satin. So this is the two nets which I've already folded into two as you can see. I will cut two pieces for the first layer, which is 10 inches long. So I will cut it out like this, as you can see. So these two pieces are for the first layer of tool, and it is 10 inches long. I will also cut two pieces for the second layer of tool, which is 12 inches long. So I will now go ahead and cut the two pieces out.
So these are the two pieces for the second layer of two. So what I will do now is to cut the remaining three layers of two, which will be done behind the camera. So what I'll do now is to join the two pieces of two net for each layer together like this. So I will join the two pieces together. Like this is about a quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So after joining, using my needle and thread, I will gather the two net. You can also run your gathering stitches on your sewing machine. So now I've gathered the two nets with my needle and thread. I will now arrange the two nets on the outer line on the first on the first circle which I've already drawn on the bridal satin. But first I will leave a space of about one inch away from the center back. I will mark the one inch I will mark the one inch first like this on both sides of the back I will now go ahead and pin the already gathered two nets on the first circle that I drew like this After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place on my sewing machine directly on the on the line, the circular line which I drew. So now that has been done, as you can see, I'll stick this to the two nets on the bridal satin. I will now pin the already gathered second layer of two on the second circular line, which I've already drawn on the bridal satin. Remember this, that the space between the layers is two inches. After pinning in place, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch it in place directly on the circular line which has already been drawn on the bridal satin. So I will stitch all around like this on my sewing machine. So now, as you can see, I'll stick the second layer of two on the bridal satin. So I will do the same thing for the three remaining layers of tool, I will gather the two first, then I will sew it on the bridal satin. So this is what I have after sewing the five gathered layers of tool nets on the bridal satin. 
So these are the five layers of two nets, as you can see. So this is the one inch space that I left at the center back. This will help to reduce the bulk, especially when I'm fixing the zip at the center back. I also made sure that I folded in the raw edges of the two nets while sewing. So this is the front peplum piece. Both the line a piece and the main fabric are together and I place the two right sides together. I will now paint the crinoline which I will be using to make the peplum stand. I paint the crinoline on the peplum like this. After painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the other pieces as well. So now that has been done for all the peplum pieces. This is the crinoline sandwich in between the main fabric and the lining. I undersick the crinoline to the lining piece for all the pieces. As you can see, this will make the crinoline to stay firmly in place on the peplum. So what I intend to do now is to join the front and the back peplum pieces together at the sides. So I will pin the back and the front together like this at the sides. Right sides will be together. I will pin the two pieces together. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the other side as well. So now that has been done, I've joined the back and peplum pieces together at the side seams. I also lightly gathered the side, the peplum at the waistline, as you can see, so that it will match up with the waistline of the tool net. I will now go ahead and fix the peplum to the two skirts. I will paint the two pieces in, in place first before taking it to my sewing machine and stitching the two pieces in place. So now that has been done. These are the two belt pieces. I will sew it like this with the right sides together. I sew it like this. I will also do the same thing for the other side as well, for the other belt piece as well. Right sides will be together. I will sew it like this. Then I will turn it to the right side. 
I will now go ahead to close the side seams of the upper bodies. But first, I will make sure I sandwich the already sewn bed pieces in between the side seams before, before sewing the side seams, before closing the side seams. I will use one inch sewing allowance for the side. I will do the same thing for the other side as well. So now that has been done as you can see. I will fix the two skirts to this side and the lining will be fixed to this side. I will now place the two skirts on the bodies like this. Right sides will be together. I will make sure that the side seams of the peplum and that of the bodies matches up. I will paint the two together like this. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stick it in place. I will also bring in the skirt lining. I will paint it with the lining of the upper bodies, like this. Right sides will be together. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stick using half an inch sewing allowance. So now that has been done, as you can see. So this is what the inner part of the dress looks like. You can see how neat the finishing is. So what I'll do now is to go ahead and fix the zip to the back of the dress. So now that has been done, I'll fix the zip. And I've also emptied the bridal satin underneath the tool net and also the lining beneath it as well. So that's it guys. We are done. This is the final look of the dress. Do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you for watching.